Hello, Paddle and Fin Nation. Matt Gibson here with Fishing for Noobs. Uh, here with another show. Really excited about this this show. Uh, today we have a, a bait and tackle uh, shop owner, uh, Mike Trigg, up near, uh, you know, kind of up in the, I would say, northern part of the state. It's really not that northern, but northern part of the state here in Indiana. Um, he, he's got a great tackle shop up there. They do great things for the community. Uh, they are great, do great things for new fishermen. So I want to bring him on and, and bring some perspective. A few things, Paddle and Finn, uh, we are having that tournament at the end of this month at Del Hollow. Make sure you get signed up. Make sure you get uh, lodging, all of that stuff. Make sure you get all that straightened out. And um, one thing I wanted to add, uh, a good friend of mine, Jason Young, is recovering from a stroke. You might know him from Indiana Kayak Anglers. So, uh, Jason, your your family and uh, all your friends are are in our prayers. Keep fighting, buddy. Uh, he's he's doing great. He, he's on that road to recovery, uh, but but far from it. So so keep it up, Jason. So, with that, I will bring on the one, the only, Mister Mike Trigg. How you doing, buddy? Good. How you doing, Matt? Oh man, doing awesome. Doing awesome. A little rainy here. I don't know. Is it raining up there too? Yeah, it just started raining actually yeah looks like that's that's kind of what we uh have in store for uh for this this spring anyway it seems like we just cannot get away from the rain so the, those water levels are definitely climbing that's for sure yeah. yeah you guys have that low bridge there at Niona too so that gets a little tricky after a little while huh yeah we were looking at the water was up about almost two feet from normal so wow it's definitely got some rain yeah, it's creeping up there then. Uh, so, yeah, just kind of introduce yourself. Let us know who you are. I'm Michael Trigg, owner of Smack and Bait and Tackle. Well, one of the owners. Me, my buddy Mike Dennis, and my wife Jennifer are all in this together. But we're located in Macy, Indiana, which is just south of Rochester, about 45 minutes north of Kokomo. Uh, got two small little lakes here, Niona South Mud Lake fantastic fishing area like just a new shop up and coming opening up yeah. so i think we're going starting into our third year now so but That's it's awesome. been exciting a lot of a lot of new stuff a lot of new products coming in so yeah yeah you guys kind of uh you know you were you were kind of like uh and i don't mean any disrespect at all with this but you guys were kind of like the the little shop that could there for a little while and then bam all of a, all of a sudden expansion so yeah so. It's, it's definitely been exciting. I mean, there, there's a lot of call for it in this area, and there just isn't any small locally owned tackle shops. I mean, they're, they're few and far between, and it, it's getting tougher to find them. So yeah. we, we wanted to fill that need. We're all fishermen here, so you know how that is. We yeah. don't like trying to figure it all out. We would like to just go find it and buy it. Yep. So, yep, exactly. so we kind of brought that whole concept into the, into the little small mom and pop shop. No, it, it's great, and, and you guys are kind of, you know, like so. You're right on the way to the lake, right off of the uh, right of right off the highway. But you, you guys also are really big uh, in, in supporting the community there, and uh, you know, supporting everything that goes on. I know I'm very appreciative of what you guys do here locally uh, for for kayak anglers, uh, but also boat anglers. Uh, you guys are involved with the Purdue Fishing Club. Uh, you guys have events. Uh, I mean, yeah. you guys are really ingrained uh, in in the fishing community, and that's just awesome to see from a a, a local tackle shop. So thank you. Uh, I I appreciate that. It, it's one of the things we strive to do is try to give back as much as we can. Like we've done several charity type things. Like we try to have kids fishing days. Like we sponsor several local high school fishing teams. We have our own local high school fishing team. You know, it's just all of those things that we can give back and bring something more to the community than just a bait and tackle shop. So, yep, yep, yeah, and you guys do do an excellent job. How many shows did you get? You you guys did so so those those that don't know, uh, kind of in the in the northern United States, uh, I would even say kind of even central United States, basically all winter there are there are some sort of tackle shows going on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're everywhere. It seems yeah. Like. Every weekend, there's something going on. How many of those shows did you guys do this year? Uh, I think we did eight total this year. I think we have ten on, already on the schedule for next year. So that's awesome. 
That's but awesome. it's one of those things you just you keep digging and keep growing, and, and that helps those small mom and pop shops stay open during the winter yeah. time. So those shows are important. So getting to those shows and yeah. meeting anglers, meeting new people that are making new innovative things. Like we brought in like bird dog rods this year. Yep, great which rods. Is a company not not far from here that are doing some really good things, offering some really good things. And to have companies like that where you can talk to the owner, you know, if there's a problem, like mm. you break a rod, like you, like a bird dog rod. So if you break a rod, you bring it back and I'll exchange it right here at the shop. So instantaneously you're back fishing. You're not waiting to ship it off right. and have to deal with all that. We'll deal with that type of stuff. So, you know, finding those companies are important to go to those shows to find those people and make those connections so you, you keep reaching out to find those better things to bring to your your angler community so yeah yeah it's, it's it's definitely a connection thing yeah yeah and and you guys do a great job of it uh yeah you guys are it seems like gosh every other week you guys have something new that you're putting on the pegs or or hey you know uh you, you'll get an email about this bait or that bait or or whatever and all of a sudden it's on your guys' shelves uh, so right. it, it, it's awesome to see you guys take feedback from real, you know, fishermen, guys that are really out there versus just buying, uh, you know, whatever a buyer should tell you to do or whatever uh, the right. trends are or anything like that. You guys do a really good job. I, I, I by no means think that you guys have the most tackle. But one oh, thing no, we still got a long way to go. <laughs> but yeah, but one thing that you guys do have is you have everything you need, especially for Niona Lake. Uh, so Niona right. Lake is, is a smaller uh, lake. Uh, it's a clearer lake. It's a, I believe it's a natural lake, right, Mike? It is a natural lake. Yeah, both the lakes here are the natural lakes. So, so Niona so and South Med both. So there's a bunch of grass in them. They're great. You guys do a great job of uh, of conservation up there as well. I know everybody kind of has their eyes hat on everybody. So, so you guys do an awesome job of that too, but you guys have the it right is. stuff for, for the, for both of those lakes and then really all over. And we've been, we've been talking to like the DNR cause like we have a boat, a, a nice boat ramp compared to some boat ramps. Yeah. <laughs> but like being able to have a, a pier there that we don't have, like we've been working with IBF and the DNR and like local area people to try to upgrade that ramp to actually allow that to have a pier that like, so people with, with needs can actually get to their boat or get to their mm -hmm. kayak and enjoy the water. You know, it's stuff like that that actually will help like make the lakes better. So yeah, absolutely. You know, we try, <laughs> we have our hands in a little bit of everything. It seems yeah. like. Yeah. I know my wife sometimes is like, are you still on the computer? It's 1 a.m. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I I've, I see you pop on all the time, Facebook, and you're doing this, you're doing that, and, you know, messaging this person, messaging that. So, I, I don't know how you guys keep it all together, but, man, you guys, you guys do a fantastic job up there. And one of the things that I personally really like about your guys' shop is that you guys have something for everybody. You guys have – you know, very good uh, entry tier kind of stuff. You guys have very good, you know, kind of that mid level and that mid price kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And you guys are starting to grow that higher end in your shop too. You mentioned bird dog rods. That's kind right. of like that mid higher, I, I would call it. Yeah. Uh, Trying to bring in some of that more custom type of stuff yeah. as well. Yeah. But like being able to have like, so we have like campground in the local area and we have people that come into Airbnb, stuff like that. So what you see in a lot of these lakes in our local area is people are looking for one information about the area, what to use, how to fish. Some of them have never fished before. So, you know, having some of those entry level things like the little tackle packs that have a little bit of everything. Like I want to learn how to bass fish. I want to learn how to crappie fish or just fish in general. And you can kind of break it down and help them walk through those paces. You don't find a lot of that at the big box stores. You know how that is. Yep. Like nothing against the big box stores. We've all shopped at Bass Pro or Cabela's or somewhere like that. It's just one of those things. But you you get more from a small town tackle shop where those people are actually fishing those lakes or talking to the anglers from that area. 
And it's, it's just amazing how much you learn. I've learned a ton just from talking to some of the older guys or right. older ladies that are out there just doing yeah. it. You know what I mean? Yeah. We have, like we have an old guy named John on the lake. We call him. He's kind of like the weatherman. We know what the fish are doing because John's fishing. Like, yeah. okay, what are, you, what are you using today, John? He's like, ah, I'm bouncing a worm off the bottom because this is what's working today. Or I'm, yeah. I'm running a rattle trap or I'm through, you know, just stuff like that. And you get more of that from that local small town bait shop that you don't find somewhere else. Oh, I preach it all the time, man. If if, if there's something that you need, go check out your, your local tackle shop. And I don't care. I don't care where in the country that is. Go try that local guy first. And, you know, sometimes his pricing is going to be competitive. Sometimes it's, it's going to be a little bit higher. But I can tell you right now, um, and, and I know you guys do pricing a little bit different, but as far as like like some of the shops, I would actually rather pay the two or three extra dollars for a lure and be able to talk to somebody and ask them what's going on on that body of water and say, Hey, I'm thinking about buying this. And then you may have this reaction of, well, that's an okay color for right now, but guys are really catching them on this right now. Uh, And and that, that information that, that you guys pass back and forth is just, you can't replace that with anything else. Right. And like we, like we crappie fish, we bluegill fish, we catfish, you know, so we're, we fish the whole spectrum of fishing basically. Now I don't go sturgeon fishing or something like that, but like guys that are coming to fish these local areas, we fish all these lakes for every species of fish that are in them. So we try to carry something for every single thing you're going to go out and find, especially in our area. Yep. And that's what we kind of designed the whole shop around. Like we're trying to service our local areas that this is what you're going to go out and catch. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to go catch your bluegill. You're going to catch your crappie, your bass and stuff like that. Your stripers, you know, all of that stuff. But being able to have something for everyone to get them on the water and help educate them about the lake itself, you know, I, I know I get in trouble for this all the time, like giving out the hot spot on the lake, but that's just one of those things. You know, I, I'm that guy. I'm going to tell you, this is a yeah. good spot to go bluegill fishing because, you yeah. know, there's a million bluegill in the lake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, like that, that local, local tackle shot knowledge is just, it's, it's just incredible. And, um, you know, you guys, um, y- you know, you guys have a lot of, people just getting into fishing, whether it be bass fishing, crappie fishing, whatever it is, uh, you guys have a lot of those people walk through the doors and, and kind of, kind of walk me through, like, what are your recommendations for like a beginner's rod and reel? I know you guys sell a lot of combos, uh, and you guys do, uh, you know, you sell, a, a, a large majority of those at, at shows as well. And you'll see my favorite thing to see at, at these shows. Cause I work, many of them for uh, other, other uh, sponsors and, uh, you know, walk down and talk to you guys. One of my favorite things, and I get a smile on my face every time it happens is when there's a 10 or 12 year old, uh, either, either boy or girl r- walking around just prouder than hell of a brand new rod and reel. And it has that oh. little smack them st- <laughs> right on it. Like that, that is just like, that makes my day. Well, it's and just like Zepco, like Zepco is usually like where we start a lot of people at. Zepco's really stepped up from where they used to be. Like they use a lot of new edge products. Um, like they're all tied into the like lose and stuff like that now. So that has upgraded their game quite a bit. You still get the good strength of the rod that Zepco always had as a kid. You know what I mean? Yep. Like we we had a little girl last year. We did a thing for the DNR at one of their camps. And we took these little tiny Zebco rods. And like she caught a four pound bass on a little tiny Zebco rod. This thing's bent like in half. And I'm like, <laughs> it's just gonna break. Yeah. But it took every bit of that. She got it in. You know, she was from upper New York. She'd never been to a lake, never fished a day in her life. And like that experience for her was like life changing. Like she was so happy about, you know, being able to catch that fish. I was excited because it really showed me how much those rods will handle. Right. Right. So like I don't have I, I try to start people out like we have the bait casters Ebco makes now. Mm-hmm. Like when they first come out, I was like, mm, is it a good rod? Is it not a good rod? Well, I took one out to use it. So I'm like, I, I'm, I sell them. So I might as well use one and see what it's right. like. 
I'm actually really impressed on how well that Zebco baitcaster works. So like when we are getting kids into using baitcasters, like they want to upgrade from a spinning rod to a baitcaster. Like a lot of times I'll tell parents this, start them out with this Zebco rod and this Zebco baitcaster. It's a little lower in, but you're not tearing up a $300 reel. And, right. you yeah. know, and like I have a daughter that fishes high school. Like she started out with a spinning rod and now she's buying, you know, more expensive bait casting <laughs> rods. And I'm a nervous yeah. wreck going, yeah. Yeah. okay, don't trash, don't trash mine. Right. <laughs> but, but she learned really fast because of the technology that they're putting in them, the new braking systems that are in them. Like all of, all of that really helps. And then coming to a shop like this, instead of going, I, I hate to do this, but like Walmart or somewhere like that, where they're not going to explain to you those braking systems, how they work. Yeah. And then what you find is you get success. And everyone knows that if you can get a kid to have success on the lake using something fishing, they're going to keep continue to fish. And then they grow in the sport. And then you start seeing them on, you know, junior high fishing teams. And then you see yeah. them at fishing tournaments. Like I went to Geist, what was it? week ago, week and a half ago. I'm sure you've seen the pictures of us mm -hmm. fishing on guys, but uh, there was a young man that I've met like four years ago and he will find, he found me at guys. I didn't even know he was going to be there, but like he comes up and he like, thanks me for the time that I've spent showing him some things. The, all of that to me is what matters at the end of the day. Yep. Like that's, that's one of the reasons why we try to keep our prices at a, at a really reasonable price. Like we try to compete as much as we can with some of the bigger stores, but you know, certain things you just you can't, this is not yeah. how that works, but yeah. But it's being able to continue to grow that angling community because just like that's how we met, like yeah. having that conversation, you meet a lot of good people and yeah. like, it's, it's a fantastic way to spend time outside and have that experience. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. Yeah. I still learn stuff every day from guys. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Me too. Me too. Like that's one of the things that has always attracted me to fishing. And, and I started fishing, you know, when I was very, very young, uh, I was really fortunate enough to grow up on the water. You know, I, I, I feel like I was very blessed there. Um, so I've, I've spent a lot of time on the water and man, if you're not learning, like what fun is it at all? Right. Like, it's just, it, it doesn't interest me. Like every year I try to learn something new and, um, you know, I, 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 I just, I'm crazy about the sport when I'm not, you know, even at work, I don't think anybody from work is probably listening to this, but even at work, like I'm just sitting there like <laughs> thinking about fishing, like, Oh, I saw this, like I should send this yeah. to trig and see if they can make it or, or like, can they, can they get this color in or, or, Hey, I wonder if they've seen this and I'll send it to you. I'll send it to, uh, one of our buddies, Bo at Bo's Bait. So I'll, I'll send it to you, nice. you know, and it's like, it just keeps. And actually today I, I was sitting in my office doing some work and I, I get a message pop up and says, uh, you know, can you give me a call? I give, gave the gentleman a call. Turns out it, him and I are going to fish your guys' night tournaments together. So like it, it just all intertangles together and it's just such a great sport and, there's some real good guys and just really great people in the sport anymore too. And, and that's what, that's what makes it fun. That camaraderie between anglers is like, you know how it's, it's, it, it, it brings everybody closer together. Like the world's crazy enough, but yep. when you can just get out there and just enjoy doing something that you absolutely love to do. Like I went fishing with chance the other day. Like I learned something from every person I fish with. Like I am not the skipping guy. Like I went and bought a new rod this year, a new reel this year. And skipping is going to be my thing this year. I'm going to try it and try to, try to perfect that technique a little bit more. Yeah. So like, you know, getting tubes and, you know, working with TMO on, on the, getting the jigs, you know, and different stuff like that. Like it's, it's a constant learning thing. If you're not learning something new, it's, like, I don't get it. Like, yeah. <laughs> this is a sport. You can learn something new every day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, and, and Mike, it, was in here, Mike was in here talking to me this morning. He's like, man, I threw my first glide bait today. He's like, that was very interesting. He's like, I've been on YouTube checking out how they're 
how they're working them and how they're using them. Like I, I'm not a glide bait. I know you use glide baits, but like I haven't got that far. Like that's a lot more. You need, you need, to, stay, you need to stay off of those for a little while. <laughs> no, yeah. no, it's uh, I'll get, uh, I'll get myself in trouble. I start buying glide baits. I know. Yeah, real <laughs> quick, real quick. But you know, when we when we think about entry tier tier stuff and, and kind of getting into the sport, I think a lot of times too. We for we, we sometimes forget that there's also the that adult population that may have may have fished when they were kids or right. or you know it, it brings back a memory of fishing with their grandpa or their dad and they want to get back in the sport. And if you get if you just go out there and Google stuff and just look, you're like, Oh my god, I don't even know if I can afford this. Like it, it's it's right. crazy. And there's just so much information out there. And you brought up that that quantum or that uh, Zepco uh, combo, like uh, that combo back, you know, even 20 years ago, that thing would have been like unmanageable to throw. Oh, yeah, it would have been a mess for somebody that was that was talented with the baitcaster. That technology between that that entry tier stuff and, and that more advanced stuff, I mean, that gap is shortening and shortening. So, like, th that Zepco. I 100% comes... agree with that. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's really changed. It has. So, like, that Zepco combo, for instance, what, like, what's a, what's an MSRP so, around? So, so they're around 49 bucks, 50 bucks. Yeah. You know, and then that you jump from that, like, and Luz has done a super good job about their combos. Like you can, you know, you can go from the low end Luz to 80, 90 bucks, clear up to, you know, start buying, you know, pro rods, pro reels and get into the four or $500 range. But they have everything in between. Like if you're looking for a jerk bait rod, you're looking for a crank bait rod, you're looking, all of these companies are really starting to step up their game to give you something that yeah. is a good quality product that you can keep for years. Like I still have one of the original Mach One bait casters that Luz came out with, yeah. and it works really good. Like it is my favorite jerk bait rod, and why I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Mike yells at me all the time. I need to, you know, you should probably upgrade. I really like how it works in the water. It's got that yeah. fast twitch action on the end of it, and that's what I like. Yep. Yeah. I just can't bring myself not to use it. It's always right. been there. It's always worked really well. But I'm on what year four or five of that rod and have never had an issue with it. Yeah. Like, you know, and you were talking at they're probably $120, $130 now. Yeah. Like that's a that's a good deal getting into fishing. Like they come out with a new jacked rod this year, and that thing is crazy nice. Like it's almost as light as a ducket. Like you're getting a pro series reel, a pro series rod, and you're still only at the two hundred dollar mark. Yeah, you know where you can get. I'm sure you have them as well as I do. You know, you got reels that cost more than the rod and reel combo together. Yeah, so it, it's nice to see all of these companies really stepping up their game to give you a lower end, all the way to a higher end, so someone can start with a product, and if they really like that product then they can continue to grow in the sport using those same products. Like, it, it's just amazing to me, like all the different stuff that's out there. Like pro fishery is another one that's coming up that we like these crazy rods that we have. I'm this younger generation. They, it, it's, it's crazy to me. And that's probably why they call them a crazy rod <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. Like they find them and they're like, nope, I got to have that. I want that. I've seen so-and-so on YouTube using these rods. They're really nice. And they jump right into it like they've been fishing for 100 years. Yeah. It's it's yeah. really amazing, the technology and the companies that are coming along. Favorites coming along. Pro Fisheries coming along. Like there's a lot of these beginner style companies that are really coming on with some really nice product for people to use. Yeah, and, and I think sometimes we put this negative tag on beginner stuff. Like this stuff is is it, like I've I've checked out the stuff you guys have and, and like some of the combos. And what's really nice about the combo too is it kind of takes the guesswork out of somebody that that's that's trying to figure out right. balance of a rod and, and and all of that stuff that, that goes along with it that, that can get really really tough and difficult to manage. 
it takes all that guesswork out of for out of it for someone and it's a really nice balanced product but you know i think we you know sometimes we hear the entry beginner uh things like that and, and there, there's a little bit of a negative kind of taste to it but i think you know and you hit on this a little bit uh it it's something that anymore that stuff lasts for right. a long time especially if you take care of it and you get it clean and and all of that stuff like you're you you're, you're putting the gear oil in it stuff like yeah. that like take you do that that stuff I mean, you start might be using it 20, 30 years from now. Yeah. Like they just are making the product so much better than it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, that, uh, you know, I, I really, I've been using kind of a mix of things. I, I use some quantum reels. I use uh, some, some Shimano reels, stuff like that. You know, so I'm kind of like mix matching. Quantum has that smoke series that is just fantastic for a really great price. Um, and then, you know, like you get into Shimano uh, and man, that SLX series reel, that uh, is just oh, yeah. that's the beat for that price. Like, yeah, you know, it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it just so mind you, blowing you, anymore. But just like when you look at those DC reels and how much that technology has yeah. come about, like the speed control, all of that stuff. And now, now they got the new digital ones that are coming out on top of that. Like, I know those are super expensive, but. That technology is going to bleed down into some of these other products that will be easier to afford as that technology grows. And like to be able to see a 10 year old kid standing on a boat, you know, throwing a bait caster that at 10 years old, there's no way in the world I was throwing a bait caster. Like I have one that's sitting here close. Like when when we were kids, this was the style bait caster we were throwing. Yeah. Like yeah. I know these are catfish reels, but these these are bait cat. These were the style bait casters, you know, the old clicker on the side, that whole yeah. thing. Like, I, you know how many of these things I bird nested and was like, I'm oh. never using a bait caster again. Oh, the same with but, these. Yes, but the but the technology has grown so much that like you can teach young kids how to use them. Like I have kids that are seven, eight years old that are throwing, you know, a, a loose bait caster and, and catching fish out here at the lake. It, yeah. it, it's really nice to see that that technology is caught up to where people can actually use them and fish with them. Mm -hmm. you, you know, as well as I, you probably use just like I do more bait casters than you use anything else just because they're far superior when it comes to what you're trying to use. Like you're using a chatter bait, stuff like that. Those heavier lures, crank baits, you know, stuff like that. You need a bait. Cat. I mean, you could throw them on a spinning rod, yeah. But they're so they're so light that, you know, you catch a big fish, you take the risk of breaking that rod. Yeah. So or burning up a reel. Yeah. <laughs> well, as a kid, I did a lot of that. Yeah. It, it, and it's all about efficiency on the water, too. Like for me, that's what I chalk it up to. I can be much, much more efficient on the water with a bait caster right. uh, that, you know, with the higher gear ratios, the just the whole the whole system of it. I can be a little more efficient on the water and. You know, hell, even 15, 16, 17 years ago, like it was really hard for me to consciously be able to go to somebody and say and recommend a bait caster if they've never used one. Now, right. like my nephew got, you, you were talking about the mock series. He got a mock series rod and reel for Christmas, and he's 10, 11 years old. He went, I, I adjusted a few things, had him cast a little bit with a chatterbait. And Christmas Day, he was out on the pond fishing. Never right. bring this at once. I'm like, that is insane to me. Like, yeah, it, it's it's just those leaps in technology. Like, yeah, and being able to explain that, that and that's it goes back again. Like going into the, some of those stores that that won't give you that information and teach you that, like. To me, it does a disservice to those young anglers that are trying to get into it, or even an adult angler that's just fishing for the first time that really wants to try one. Like, I don't know how many of them I sold at the show this year. And I would have people that would stop me and go, thank you. Just thank you for taking the time to explain to me how it worked and how to set it up. And like, I'm still getting emails now from people I met at the show. They're like, Oh my gosh, I love this bait caster. Like, I'm so glad you talked me into getting this thing. Yeah. 
and teaching me how to, or kind of showing me how to use it and how to set it up, really learning a lot. Like those, those success stories is what I love. Like this is the whole, one of the whole reasons behind all of this. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, but I've always been that kind of person. Like it's, I grew up here. Like I fished Manitou a lot when I was a kid. Like I used to ride my bicycle everywhere, my little tackle box, my little zip go fishing pole, you know, and I was all over the place fishing. And my grandparents lived here at Niona, so I fished here a lot. But all of that time and all of that, like, I loved going to that bait shop in town. And, like, I would go in there and he would say, okay, hey, you know that old Kelly worm? You need to break out that little Kelly worm. Those fish are really, like, I'll get guys that come in here, you know, they're, they're, <laughs> they're in their ranger boat. They're like, man, the fish just aren't biting today. I'll, be, I'll, I'll hand them a Kelly worm and they'll look at me like, I'm not using that. And I'm like, seriously, I'll tell you what, just take it and use it. If you don't catch one fish, bring it back and I'll buy it back. And they're like, I can't believe I actually caught a fish on it. Yeah. yeah. You know, I caught like 10 fish. They're like, they're not huge fish, but yeah. I'm still catching fish on them. Yeah. Because you took a bad day and turned it into a good day on a bait I never would have thrown. And it, it's yeah. just stuff like that. Yeah, the old purple with the white spots on it. That used to be the deal. I don't know if it still is up there. It, or not. it still is. Like I, I'll get them in, and like a week later, I got to order them again because I sell so many of them. But they work. Yeah, yeah. Like that bait's yeah. been around. Oh, man, I'd say seventy years probably. It's been around a long time. Yeah, yeah. It, and and for those of you who don't know what it is, it's, it's basically a pre-rigged worm. Uh, what what's it have in it, Mike? Uh, uh, three hooks. Uh, yeah, three hooks. Three hooks and yeah, and it's got a little line that comes out. It's all pre-rigged, tied up. You just hook it on and go. Basically, got a little weed guard on it, or they used to. Yeah. Uh, they still do. Yeah, you, weed you can get them. It. You can get them. You can get them with weed guards or without weed guards now. Yeah. But it's it's the same bait. I mean, it's and it's consistently worked for years and years and years. It's like you'll get people like, ah, oh, I ain't worm fishing. I ain't doing that. Like I ain't throwing a plastic worm. You. There are more fish caught on Cinco's, which is, you know, mm -hmm. a little ballpoint pen basically is what yep. they made as a plastic bait. And then, you know, throw it a Texas rig on a worm. Like more fish are caught on those worms than anything else. So you can teach somebody pretty quick how to get, go out and catch a bass. Like we use a double fluked rig, yep. which Mike throws together once in a while that jenna caught her very first bass on that just twitching it through the water she'd never bass fished a day in her life <laughs> yeah. she never picked up a fishing pole till she was you know until we opened the shop and now she's yeah. ranked number 15 or 16 in the entire state of indiana so yeah you know, yeah she's it's, it's just goes, oh yeah <laughs> it's, it's crazy yeah. honestly yeah but it's it's just amazing to see like go back to those Kelly worms or stuff like that and then see where we're at today with some of the new stuff Berkeley's doing, mm -hmm. you know, that crush city's been really hot, really nice product that credge and the, the uh, finisher, those mm -hmm. baits are insane right now, but like I fished them. So it's a new learning process. And part of that has to deal with forward facing sonar, but a lot of that stuff is just, amazing how it works in the water and i know a lot of people are that that battle between forward facing sonar no forward facing sonar forward facing that that whole battle of looking at the screen all day during the big tournaments but what it has done is is show people how the fish react to the bait itself mm -hmm. so it's amazing the technology that's gone into that is now increasing the way the baits work. So being able to see how that twitches in the water and seeing how that fish reacts to it, your, your bait products themselves, the new market products that are coming out are just miles ahead of where they have been. Like it's, it's amazing the technology that's going into that stuff and the time and effort that anglers are putting in going, wow, th this works. Like I see how this works. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So let's say you have somebody walk right into the shop, no rod, no reel, no line and no bait to throw. Ooh. What are, you know, this time of year. So, we're, 
so here in central Indiana, we're in we're in kind of the springtime. We've had up and up and down temperatures. We've had uh, cooler nights. We're starting to warm up a little bit. I can tell you from a little bit of fishing I've been doing, those bad boys are getting shallow quick. But yeah, they are in a hurry. Yeah, yeah. So, so somebody walking in, let's 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 start off with the rod and reel. What rod and reel are you recommending to them? I would probably be, I would probably move them to the into that lose series depending on age category. A lot of that will depend on age category. An adult is going to take care of a rod a little bit better than a 10 year old kid is going to take care of a rod. So I will move them more towards a loose product or a lower end quantum or something like that, or a pro fishery or even a favorite that lower end section of that kind of find out where they're comfortable. Like Seeger has been a huge thing for me for line. Like I really love that line. It's like, I, I haven't changed my line in probably two years. It's just good quality line. Like P lines are really good ones. So I'm probably going to push you into those areas. Yeah. Depending, once again, we're dependent on age groups here. Yep. You know, like springtime, I'm looking at jerk baits, chatter baits, you know, probably not going to push someone into a jig. If they know something about a Texas rig, I may push them into a Texas rig worm, something like that. But those are probably where I'm going to look at, maybe even a crankbait, depending on how much experience they have. But like the spectrum is so big anymore. Like, yeah. you know, yes. if you're just going to go, you're just going to go out and like bluegill fish or something like that right now, mm -hmm. you know, we like our crappie fishing, like we have a whole line of, of bonehead that we use for cr our crappie line. Fantastic baits. Like you can buy it the whole kit together it's affordable it's cost effective you can get a rod go out crappie fish and you have everything right there from the jig head to all of that stuff so just depending on what you what you're wanting and kind yeah. of where you're going with what you're going to fish for yeah and, and and you know i know we focus kind of on the rods and reels here but yeah i mean like a I would. I always recommend, and, and I don't know if you recommend this too, but somebody for bass fishing, a seven foot, medium heavy, medium action rod, somewhere in there, and probably like a seven three to one reel. Uh, that's still gonna be quick enough to, okay. to, to run a lot of uh, a lot of baits you want to, but still slow enough. And then I think you bring up a really good point in line. That is another world that man, you can get wrapped up in really quick. I know, pun intended. Yeah. But like it, it's like you, you like. There's line that's you know forty, sixty bucks a spool, and then you oh, have yeah. that's nine dollars a spool. So, so like I have a, I have a cigar braided line. Yeah, like it goes from their their low end all the way to their high end. So like you can start out like thirteen dollars for braided line, yep. but you can get up and like. Their top end line is like seventy bucks. Yeah. <laughs> like, is that the SmackDown it's, or is it above no, that? It's, that's that's way miles ahead of SmackDown line. Really? It's yeah, and it's it's not easy to get. Yeah, but it's crazy insane on how like it's like throwing two pound mono line when it's forty pound braid. Yeah, it, it's just insane the technology that they put into that stuff, but. You still, you're looking at those huge price gaps. That's kind of another thing when we look at where people are starting out. Like, I, I'm not here to break the bank. I don't, I don't want you to come in and feel like, man, I just spent, you know, three hundred dollars and I didn't get anything. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Like, why, why did I do this? But it's kind of talking to people, kind of understanding who they are and, and what they're kind of looking for and trying to fit them with something that's going to be effective for what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And especially their, their knowledge of fishing. Where, where is that at? I mean, are, are they very, very beginners? Never put a rod in their hand. Like I had a guy that come in the other day, one never been fishing a day in his life. And he wanted to go bluegill fishing. He goes, I need some of them baits with teeth. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah. He goes, they're those little white things. They're only about this big. Everybody keeps telling me I need to get them. I'm like, oh, wax worms or bee moths or something like yeah. that. And he's like, oh, yep, that's what they're called. 
Worms with teeth. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Worms with teeth. But like he called me today and was like, thank you so much. Well, you know, with the bobber you set me up, with the weights you set me up with, with that new little rod. He goes, I've been out here catching bluegill. He goes, and I've never caught a fish a day in my life. He goes, it's been so much fun. And but it's just kind of talking to people and finding out what they what they may be comfortable with. Like I'll find a lot of times like guys are stubborn, you know, <laughs> yeah. like I'm not, I'm not using this rod. I, I want a spinning rod or I want a bait caster. It's the only thing I'm using, you know, and then you go to the other side of that. A lot of the beginning women will use, you know, the old Zebco style rod, the old quick button rod, you know, or a spinning rod. And that's where they feel comfortable. So you got to kind of talk to people and see where they're comfortable. Yeah. It, yeah. And, and, and you can tell a really good tackle shop from a really bad tackle shop. And it's, it's a hundred percent, not about the size of it or how many people are in there, anything like that. If you go and you ask somebody, what's your opinion on, on this or what, where should I be? What, you know, if they're not asking you what your fishing goals are, Get out of that shop because there are yeah. plenty of shops that are going to go, well, you need the St. Croix rod, which St. Croix is a great product. You need the St. Croix rod that's $250, and you're just learning how to fish today. And then, yeah, we need to throw this $300 reel on top of it, and this is what you have to do. And right. then they, they can't tell you why. They can't tell you why this brand is, is different than the other. And that, that's what's great about shops like what you guys have is that – you listen to that feedback and you're listening to the goal. So, so the, the gentleman you just brought up, his goal was to catch a fish. You yeah. helped him achieve that goal with, with the best equipment that you could provide him with and the best knowledge that you could provide him with. And that's just, that right. is absolutely huge. Like we, we even print out like local maps for our, air, our area lakes. And we, I think there's like 10 or 15 of them up there now because there's about that many lakes in our general area. Yeah. That we that we fish, so it's not like we've never been there. So, like to be able to pull out a map, you know, that has all the depths on it, and you can actually show them, you know, like these are the areas that I would kind of concentrate on, especially if they have a boat and we can get them on the lake. Like you're looking at these patterns because you know fish are in about 15 foot of water, so you can be looking at these 15 foot areas, you know, off these points or. You know, in these coves, stuff like that. Like being able to show people that as well really helps let them have more success. And at the end of the day, that's as a bait shop owner, that's what I want. I want you to be successful because I know if you are, you know, so you're going to come see me again, and we're going to have another story to share later on. Yeah. And and I enjoy that. You know, that's one of the reasons why we have a table in our shop. You know, how many guys we have come in here, sit down, and and just tell us their stories about, you know. We went fishing today. This is what we were catching. But it also gives you that knowledge of, oh, hey, the crappie you're biting, they're at five foot deep or they're at 15 foot deep. They're using, you know, minnows and, you know, they're throwing this jig or whatever to catch all that. So it's that knowledge. It's yeah. it's being able to pass all that stuff on. Like I, I enjoy that part. Yeah. I mean, honestly, a tackle shop is just it, it, it's a it's a community circle. Uh, to where everybody that everybody that fishes uh, gets to come hang out and tell their biggest lie to each other and <laughs> and and maybe maybe help each other a, a little bit and uh, you know kind of kind of talk a little trash sometimes but just have fun with it and uh, no that's great so as a as a kind of a you know you guys are 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 established and, and you're you're getting more established um, kind of you know what are the what are the hot trends right now? You you mentioned uh, forward facing sonar. Um, are you seeing that kind of a, even even kind of like more at a local level? Because when I think about forward facing sonar, I see it on TV. I see it a little bit on the lakes now, but not tremendous amount. Um, so like, are you guys starting to see that locally, or like kind of what what trends are you? Seeing? We we are between that and kayak angling. Like kayak angling has been the explosion to me. Like I cannot believe how far kayak angling has come in the last four or five years. It's crazy. Like 
we we sponsor several of the grubby tournaments this mm -hmm. year and like that whole program is just you look around i was like i didn't understand how big kayak fishing was yeah. until i got involved in that and i'm like i got kayak this kayak group and this kayak group's reaching out and this kayak group and now we're doing one for the ladies here on my own lake the ladies are having a grubby tournament here yeah for just ladies and being able to do that stuff like between that and forward facing seminar, like I'm starting to see more boats come through in the morning and they're like, wow, there's a ton of electric. I mean, guys have got four or five screens on the front of their boat. Now you would have never seen that stuff yeah. six years ago, right. seven years ago. Right. But it, it is definitely a growing trend. But to me, the biggest shock has been that kayak group. Like yeah. I cannot, that is just growing by leaps and bounds. And I think it, because it, it, there's so many more people who can afford to do that. Like it, you can get expensive into a hundred thousand dollar boat or an eighty thousand dollar boat, you know, and then you're talking twenty thousand dollars worth of electronics. Yeah, you know, crazy. so. But I I see that that kayak group far surpassing where even floor facing sonar is. That's always going to be a thing, I think, because mm -hmm. they're upgrading it so much as we move along. That Garmin's coming out with a new system that. It's just super crazy how clear it is. Like the fish look like they're yeah. 3D swimming around underneath the water. Have you seen it yet? Yeah. Like I the, have. the videos it's for it. it yeah. It's it's mind blowing the yeah. technology. But like for me, like I've been on boats before facing sonar and you're you're looking at that stuff. And for me, it was like, oh, hey, if I work this bait this way, for me, it was a more of a teaching moment. Yeah. Like Oh, that's why this bait doesn't, because I'm not a much of a crankbait guy, yeah. but I, I was on the front of the boat and I'm like, oh, I understand how this bait's working under the water now. Yeah. Now I understand why these fish are reacting the way it is. So there, there are some real big pluses to the forward facing sonar, especially if you're using it to teach yourself how to be a better angler. Yeah. Because then at some point you're just shutting it off. You're good. You can just go fish and it's learning that situation at mm -hmm. that moment in time. But yeah. to me, that that big growing community is that kayak group. Fantastic people, great anglers. You're getting more females involved. Like it's it's just really blown up, and and I enjoy it when they stop in here because they yeah. tell me because there's places they're getting in the lake that I'm never. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so I really enjoy those conversations. Because I learn a lot from them about how the water works. Like, like Niona Lake, we always knew there was kind of like an under under current that was underneath by the bridge, stuff like that. You hear some of these kayakers that are actually having to work through that to get back to that south side. You kind of find out where that's at, and you're like, you learn a lot of stuff. Like it's it's very interesting to me. So we've tried to carry start carrying some of that kayak stuff as well because of that group stopping in here. Mm -hmm. sharing their stories but have them being able to if they break something they can stop try to stop it and pick something up so but that group has really impressed me yeah yeah and and i don't i was trying to think back when it, when i first met you i don't i'm not sure that you ever knew that i kayak fish until kind of further on down the line because you know it, it just it just never came up you know it's just like fishermen to fishermen talking and and yeah What's crazy about a kayak, and, and I always try to explain this to people, especially in a river, and in Niona, I can see it as well, like, you feel so much of the water, because your ass is on the water, like, you feel it, like, you feel current, right. you feel all of a sudden dead spots in current, you feel, um, like, you know, I, I grew up on the Kokomo Reservoir, and same way, we always knew there was current there, but with my kayak, I can actually use it to feel the current and where the current breaks and where where it begins again. And yeah, it's crazy. And you know, it, it, it's really great uh, as as a kayak community to see guys and and businesses like yours get interested in our sport. Uh, and and you guys have been just great uh, supporting it. And it, it's, you know, years ago, it would have been very tough for a kayak organization to come to you and say, hey, you know, we're doing this and like we're looking for support, local support. 
that's that used to be a really difficult thing to go out and talk about. But now guys like you are like, yes, like we need to be involved in this, like want to be involved. And it's that growth is just it's tremendous. And uh, it, it, it's really great to see all the support within the state uh, uh, with that as well. No, it's it's just absolutely amazing to me. It, it is. I've, I've been able to meet so many different styles of anglers yeah. because of kayaking. Like it's it's amazing to me. Like those guys are fishing in rivers. They're fishing in lakes. They're fishing in whatever <laughs> they're fishing in two inches of water sometimes yeah like i don't i mean they're in spots for them like i don't know how you got back there but <laughs> how's the fishing back there like yeah. it's super exciting yeah but like they're having to learn different styles and techniques and how to work baits and and how to you know being able to pull in fish from a kayak like i tried that like it's it's not as easy as people think but <laughs> yeah yeah, like standing on a kayak. Who would I would have never in a million years tried to stand on a kayak because yeah. I'd have been drowned. I'd have been floating in the water somewhere because yeah. I'm not being able to stand up on a kayak. But it, I really like that that relationship that we are building with those kayak anglers. And like I tell them when they stop in here, if there's something that you need me to carry, like so, because I know your cone could be coming through here to fish tournaments through this area. Just let me know what you need. And we will do our very best to bring that product into the store. So that way, if, if something does happen and you need it, you know, you can come here and find it. Yep. And that's uh, kind of how we've designed a lot of our shop is, a, is around that is listening to what those anglers in our area are wanting us to carry, you know, the different companies that they like. Yep. And we try to bring those things in. So they have them here. Yeah, yeah, I you you guys do a tremendous job in not just chasing trends, but but chasing what what's actually being used on the water. Like we have we have several like like we make some of our own plastic. Like we have Southern Indiana Bait Company, which is another really good plastic mm -hmm. company. Young guy that goes to school at Purdue, fantastic young man. Like TMO out of Indianapolis, making all that tungsten, affordable tungsten that you can you can buy and don't feel like you're gonna go broke. Yep. You know, it's stuff like that, like toxic jigs, stuff like all of that stuff. Those guys are local. Like you can have a conversation with them, but they're still producing a really good product. Yeah. Like I met these two guys out of Kentucky that are making these jigs. I think I gave you some at the show actually to yep. try out. Yeah. Like they're super nice. Yeah. And, but they're at a price point that isn't going to break your bank. Right. <laughs> and you're still getting a super good product. And, and that's another thing that I've tried to kind of bring into the shop is being able to have those things. So yeah. it, it's definitely been a, a growing process. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you can, you can tell when you guys are tweaking things because you start seeing, you start seeing some pegs that are, that are getting lower and some that like do this. And then all of a sudden it, it something's moved over here now and, and it, it's not over here anymore. And yet you brought up TMO tackle. Uh, I mean, they're they're a they're another great company that they make really high end, really quality stuff. Like their hooks, yeah, yeah. Like their flipping hooks are are tremendous. You mentioned their tungsten. Uh, they make uh, a tube jigs now. I mean, they've got they have jigs themselves. They have all kinds of stuff. And right. if you if you look at that price point though, so when you look at like Strike King, stuff like that. Like a lot of guys, that's that's a big one for a lot of people. So being able to compare the two is easy. So like Strike King, you're looking at for a half ounce tungsten around 12, 13 bucks. You know, TMO, you're looking at about half that, you know, five to six dollars. Yeah. Like that price difference, still getting a good quality product. To me, that is extremely important for anglers that are trying to you know, be out here doing these tournaments. It's not cheap to go, you know, you're paying your fees to get into tournaments and all of that stuff. Like if you can still buy a good quality tungsten and save yourself some money, like at the end of the day, it's about putting food on, on your table. That's right. You, you got to be able to still feed your family and take care of yourself. So yep. I, I, I look for that stuff, that good quality product that you're still getting, but at a price that you you're not breaking the bank to do it. Right. And that's kind of like bird dog. Bird dog is one of those rods. It's not the highest end rod out there, but it is a super really nice rod that comes with a great warranty yeah. that you're not breaking the bank to buy. 
And yeah, and I actually met those guys at uh, at one of the shows, and I I bought I bought a rod. Um, me being a, a I, I have two now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, so you know, I I'm I'm a tube fisherman. I think you know all, all the viewers know that. Um, so, so I like to throw a stupid tube a lot, and the four point two uh, stupid tube paired with with their stupid tube rod uh, with fifteen to seventeen pound test line. Like I've been using that probably for the last two three months. That the quality of that rod, the lightness of that rod, that company is not a fly by night company like, oh no they're gonna they're gonna be around their their cork is, is tremendous you can tell that that uh the craftsmanship is up there uh and the action's right because uh, one of the owners is a tremendous fisherman uh he he knows the right actions to pick out in a rod uh so like that stupid tube rod is is literally the best tube rod i've ever thrown and i've thrown almost all of them so I, I bought the the new scalpel yep. rod that they had. Oh my gosh, I'm in love with that thing. Like I really like that rod, but the action is so nice. Yeah, like I can tell. Like when you're fishing an eight hour tournament, and you know this as well as I do. Like you're fishing an eight hour tournament, and you're using a heavy rod. Like you feel it by the end of the day. Your yeah. wrists are hurting, your arms are hurting, your shoulders yeah. are hurting, your backs. Yeah. <laughs> you know that typical fishing thing that you get. But you can tell with a good quality lighter rod, like how much difference it makes in in, in a day of fishing. Eight hours on the water, you tell them. I can tell the difference. Yeah, like yeah. The action of the rod feels great. Like, yep. You can just it's, like the sensitivity of the bites, like like it's instant. Like you feel it all the way down through the rod. It's nice. It is. It's it, it's a very nice rod. I've been super impressed with them. Can't get, can't wait to get more uh, rods and kind of start filling filling that out a little bit, but man, their rods are, are, are tremendous. And, and that's, what's really cool too, is you guys have attached yourselves with, with Indiana companies, with regional companies. And like, that is, that is really, really unique because um, they may get there someday, but like bird dog rods, uh, TMO, I don't think TMO has been picked up by anybody huge yet, but like, you know, you think of like bird dog rods, you're not going to walk into Bass Pro and buy that quality of rod right. from that price. You just, it's just not going to happen. Uh, so th that's that's what's great about going into those local comp those local uh, those local tackle shops, talking to people and getting their opinions on things. You have an opinion on bird dog rods because you oh, yeah. right, and it, that helps, and especially when you can like talk to like talk to the owner, talk mm -hmm. to the person that's out there going. Okay, this is why I designed this rod. This is why I made this rod. This is why I like this rod. Like the eyelets that I'm using on this rod, and this is why I switched to these eyelets. Like you get that technical information from them because yeah. they were out there using it on the water to perfect that product to bring it to market. Like this company right here, Thin Man. Holy cow. This this little thing yeah. is absolutely amazing. Like this company came out, I think it, uh, I cast this last year. Like we started carrying that product. One, I, I met the owner, super fantastic family, great people. But like I sold it to a bow fisherman the other day. He's like, look, I just cut this 300 pound test line. He's just like, Toop, cuts it right yeah. off. He's like, I can never find my pliers while I'm out bow fishing. He goes, it fits right on the end of my, my reel section there. The little, the rod that sticks out. He goes, this thing is fantastic. He was, I can cut the line and retie and do all the stuff I need to do. I have them on almost all my rods now because yeah. I'm like, I don't have to find my pliers. I can right. switch it out. I can ship it off. And, yep. you know, using 40, 50 pound braid, yep. not having to worry about spraying the line and trying to get it through the eyelet because it's all frayed out. And you're like, yep. you start getting frustrated. You just want to go back and fish. Yeah, where you do like, this 17 times to try to cut through it. <laughs> Yeah, and it won't tight. tug at all. Yeah, exactly. Trying trying to hold it in your teeth and cut it off, it becomes a pain. It does. But it does. but it's such a nice little quality product that it's almost like oh, I got to have it on all my rods now. Yeah. But like the stow package, like some of the higher end rods don't come with a hook keeper. 
I don't understand that, but there are some higher end rods that they don't put hook keeps on them. You can put one of those on there. It's got a perfect hook keep. You can put your locks, your drop shot in and hooks your hook in. You don't have to worry about all that stuff getting caught in your carpet, your boat, and all that. It's, people are really coming out with some products that are really thought out. Yeah. They were out there fishing and they were like, okay, I'm tired of this. Like, I, I got to find something. Yeah. So they, they take the time to, to manufacture and come up with really good product. And all of that stuff's all made in the U.S. Like, yeah. it, it's fantastic that yeah. people are finally starting to make some really good quality products again. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so I'm, I'm all into that new innovation stuff. Like, I like that new stuff. Oh, me too. I love it. I love it. And, and that's one of the reasons that I really love working with like Dubro, you know, Dubro's up in, up in Illinois and small company, they build all their stuff in house. And it's just like, it, it's so exciting and refreshing to work with companies like that, uh, that, that think about things for fishermen, for bow hunters, for, you know, they do hobby stuff, yeah. so all of that stuff. Yeah. They're, they're, I mean, and being able to call and like have a conversation with like, I'm not calling the owner of strike King to have a conversation or, you know, Berkeley or someone like that. Like we all use those products because there's, we like them. There's parts of them. We really like this. Yep. Some we don't, but, yep. but I'm not calling the president and like having a conversation or talking to his design team going, uh, you know, if you tweak this maybe a little bit, like I'm getting a lot of feedback from the anglers, like this bill's a little off and the movement in the water's not quite right. Like some of these custom tackle that's being made like you call them and you're like hey this is what i'm hearing back from my guys you know my pro staff's using these and you know they said if you tweak this just a little bit it would make it a little bit better if you if you use this style hook you know made it more weedless it would be a better presentation in the water all of that stuff matters yes. to an angler that's out there doing it so yeah, absolutely. I, I like that. That's why I've brought so much of that stuff and, and yeah. continuing to bring a lot of that stuff from our area in here is because that's what's making their product better. It's putting it in guys' hands, getting it in the water, you know, fishing with it, finding out what works, what doesn't work. You know, uh, is this must have hook working out for me or is it not working out for right. me? It's depend, you know what I mean? It's, yep. it's very interesting to me. And I like that side of it. Like I like being able to talk to those guys. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, a like toxic, nerd. You know, I, like, I like toxic, toxic jigs. I I talked to him the other day, and I, like he's got some very interesting ideas. Mm -hmm. Like some of his some of his top water baits are just they're fantastic. Like, and he really cares about what he's producing and how what how his presentation in the water looks. Like, I like stuff like that. Yeah, I, I know you appreciate a lot of that stuff too. Yeah, and, and that's the reason I work with a lot of the companies I, you know, th that I work with is, is that you know th they care about customers. You know, I'm wearing a, a PH Custom T-shirt. I've been with Phil forever. When you call PH's number, Phil Hunt is the guy that answers the phone because it's his <laughs> damn cell phone number. Like it, it, it's not even a business number. <laughs> so like, well, well uh, unfortunately, the shop's number is my telephone number, so <laughs> my phone goes off all the time. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, that's part. Of, that's part of being in the sticks where we're at. You know, yeah, because yeah. You, know, you got all of you. You don't. You don't have a really good company that you can hook up with to have a, a landline phone, which uh, you know, most people don't have a landline phone anymore, but. Right. As a business, it would be nice to have a landline phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because absolutely. my phone's ringing at midnight going, hey, we're crappie fishing on the bridge. Uh, can you let us have some crappie minnows? Absolutely. I'll come yeah. I'll come sneak down to the shop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys just started a website uh, not too long ago. So uh, kind of kind of talk about that a little bit. Uh, what is smackum.com? M-A-C-K-E-M.com. Yep. Yeah. So as the website gets online and going, you'll be able to buy our apparel online. Almost all of the product you'll be able to purchase online. So from Berkeley to our own custom baits to other custom companies that are in our shop, I want to be able to offer all that. Rods might be a little bit different. So still trying to figure out with, with transporting rods and all of that, like the cost can get out of control for shipping, stuff like that. So we're still working on some of that stuff, but 
we're already starting to ship product. I, like I told you, I just shipped a bunch of product to California. I shipped a bunch to Indianapolis. So you're going to be able to come on there and find out what's going on in our local areas. Like we're going to start posting the stuff for open tournaments from kayaks to actual just regular boating tournaments, kids tournaments, you know, high school tournaments, what's going on with Purdue and Indiana and all those guys. And so what's going on in the local areas, like the different stuff that maybe the DNR might be doing at the lakes. Yep. Uh, we're going we're gonna to start keeping track of all of that stuff and putting it out there on our web page along with our Facebook. And of course, we're starting to build our Instagram page and all yeah. of that. You know how that social, yeah. you got to start branching all those social media pages together. But yeah. once it's all functioning correctly, yeah. that's been that's been the hurdle is trying to get product on. And once you get all the little bugs worked out, it it's up and running now. You can order some of our stuff now. And we're starting to add product daily to that list. So. That's awesome. I'm I'm, exci I'm excited about that new adventure. It's going to be a little bit more work for me, probably, because I I'm, I take care of ordering and social media and all of that yeah. stuff. And yep. Still fish and still <laughs> trying to find time to do other things. Yeah. No, that that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, and, and it's great. It's great to see you guys getting this this website up and going. So you know, I, I encourage everybody to go out there and check that out. Check them out on all their social medias. Um, Anybody that you want to kind of thank uh, or or uh, just kind of last words here before we before we wrap up the show? Well, Matt, I, one, you, thank you for the opportunity to do this. Sure. Like, I, I don't do this much. Don't normally yeah. sit in front of uh, in front of an audience of people. I'm really good at talking. Like, I, I'll talk for hours, and you know that. Yeah. I don't ever know how to stop doing this. But it just just the angling community in general, the support that the community's brought to us, anglers in general have brought to us, all of the different groups that have reached out to us to have us be a part of what they're doing. All of that to me is, is humbling. Like yeah. we, we started this with an idea of, Hey, buddy of mine makes some baits. Let's go start yeah. a bait shop. But it, it was deeper than that for me. Yeah. Like, I have a cricket box in here in the in the shop now that I have a picture of me and my grandfather standing in front of from the original bait shop here, you know, and he had always talked about that idea of opening a bait shop someday and didn't get that opportunity. And when Mike brought that to me and my wife was like, well, the two of you should start a bait shop. That whole community I was able to come back and be a part of. So, yeah. All of this is important to me, the reaching out and being a part of each one of these groups. Like I can't thank the angling community enough. Like it's, it's, it's been a love of mine building this, yep. but yeah. it's not just me building it for me. It's me building it for the anglers to have a place to come for years to come. I want to be the old guy on the, I want to be the old guy on the front porch telling young guy, you know, you should be looking at that little Zebco rod. It really works. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No. And, and thank you. And, and thank, uh, you know, just for everything that you do as well for the kayak, kayak community, fishing community, everybody. Um, so, uh, no, I, I appreciate you as well. And, uh, yeah, I mean, everybody out there, go follow their, their social media. That's free. Like go out there, follow them. I love your guys' post. It's like a, it's like a community post of like, like yeah. the campground opening up all that stuff like it's just oh, yeah. it, it, it's great so uh, we, uh, we try to share all the stuff coming from the local community as well yeah. so you, yeah. you get a lot of information sometimes yes yes absolutely absolutely so i uh, appreciate you being on mike uh let's do it again sometime if you're up for it Ab absolutely this was fun i yeah. i would enjoy doing it again it was awesome. a lot smoother than i figured i was going to be so hey, i appreciate I it man, man. I told you, <laughs> kicking it off is the hard part. After that, it's all easy. So I uh, appreciate you being on. Um, I'm going to drop you off here and do a little outro here and, and talk about a few things. So, again, uh, Mike, thank you very much for, for coming on. So Thanks, Matt. Yep. Truly appreciate it. Appreciate you. 
Wow, that's awesome, huh? And yeah, uh, what a what an episode! I really enjoyed that one, as I do all of mine. Uh, there's not a more genuine human uh, that I know uh, than than Trig himself, uh, and and all that stuff is is truly genuine. And uh, like I said, get out there, follow their social media, check out their their new website. Uh, again, Powell and Thin, uh, you know, they will be at Dell Hollow the the end of the uh, the month here. Get signed up for that tournament. It's on Tourney X. If you can't make it, at least follow it on Tourney X and, and kind of see what's going on. Um, and with that, thank you guys for listening, and uh, we'll see you at the next one.